That's it. Back at slabs. Going to zero. It's over. The gig is up. They're done. Sell them all. What's going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards of Comics here. Uh, this was something I kind of stumbled across the other day while researching for the Sunday video. And I had noticed something on one particular card. It was the LeBron Tops Chrome. And I was like, let me take a little bit deeper into this when I have some more time. And that is, and I think a lot of people, you know, people have mentioned this in the comments, and I think we've all kind of seen this, especially lately, and we'll, we'll get into that as well. The eroding value of the Beckett brand, I guess, for lack of a better statement. They have obviously had their trials and tribulations throughout the pandemic. And then recently with the whole grading scale thing, I think that really kind of kicked it into overdrive. The, I don't want to say loss of faith, because I think we still all believe in them as graders. Like I like their slabs. Uh, I trust their grades. Uh, I like a lot of card. I own a lot of cards in their slabs. But the gaps between PSA and Beckett have continued to dwindle over time. And you notice it a lot where I, I saw some heavy movement is actually on the BGS 10 pristine grade, along with other ones as well. Don't get me wrong. So market movers, link in the description down below, promo code whole nine yards. We're going to do a deep dive in the market movers classic charts and graphs video for you folks that love those from way back in the day. If you've been following the channel for a really long time, uh, videos kind of like this one or what uh, I used to focus a lot on back in the day during the, the, the peak of the market. So let's go ahead and dive in here. I've pulled multiple examples across multiple different sports. So on the main section of the screen, we are going to have market movers. Uh, on the right-hand portion of the screen, we will get into that in just a quick second. So I have LeBron Topps Chrome 20 to 2003 uh, rookie base card. And I specifically pulled cards that have are very popular, have a lot of transaction value, and are decently valued. Uh, they've had long established markets. So that was kind of my target audience for this. And I tried to get at least a couple different sports. So, and I ran these back to January of 2020. So pre everything going crazy up through today. One, you see some actual absolutely wild stuff in the Middle East, but we're going to focus on the beginning and the end. So what I have done here back in 2020, I was curious what the ratios were, what the gaps were between a PSA 10 to BGS 10, a BGS 9.5 to a PSA 10, and a PSA 9 to a BGS 9.5. So you see the starting values here. Those are those numbers. This is what these were selling for back in January of 2020. Now, there'll be a little variance here depending on if everything sold on exactly the same day. And obviously, back at 9.5s have a little bit of variance depending on the subgrades. So, all that's going to be, you know, just kind of, it's in there. I just want to make a note of it. There's no real perfect way to handle that. But a Beckett Pristine 10, yeah, the subgrades could vary a little bit, but that's basically a BGS 10. Like there's not, there's not as much variance in a BGS 10 pricing, depending on the subgrades as there is a BGS 9.5. And that's kind of the main point that I wanted to drive home here. But there's some interesting data on the other stuff. So we see these numbers here. To the right, uh, up here specifically, you could see these are the ratios of the LeBron Topps Chrome back in 2020. So a BGS 10 typically sold for 1.73x, a PSA 10, a BGS 9.5, I'm sorry, a PSA 10 sold 1.7x better than a BGS 9, 9.5, and a BGS 9.5 sold 1.7x better than a PSA 9. Kind of interesting the way that that all worked out. Every one of these cards is kind of different. But the big thing, when you in market movers, down at the bottom, you can click on this ratios tab. And this is showing ending average ratios. So these values here, what they are currently selling for today. So we come down here and look at this. And this is going to give us a little bit more information than what we want. 
PSA 10 to BGS 10 pristine is now down to 1.4. So that gap has narrowed. PSA 10 to BGS 9.5, that's this one right here, is now 2x up from 1.7. So that gap has widened. And then a PSA 9 to a BGS 9.5 used to be 1.7 is now down to 1.6. So that gap has narrowed ever so slightly. So that's the example of the LeBron. So you could see, and once again, I, I kind of want to focus specifically on the PSA 10, the BGS 10, because I think that's the most interesting one. My major takeaway from all this is, is that the BGS 10 value, it is not on the pedestal that it once was back in the day. Now, I did not include black labels here. They just do not sell frequently enough to get any meaningful data out of it. But BGS 10s, there's a decent enough of them out there and they transact often enough. So back in 2020, it was 1.73. That gap has now narrowed to 1.4. The other interesting aspect of this is I reran these exact same charts, but I just went the last 365 days. What you could see here is just going back a year, and I went back a year for all the cartons that we're going to look at. Yeah, there's going to be some seasonality depending on the player and the sport that we're looking at, but generally speaking, you get the idea. PSA 10 LeBron Tops Chrome is down 25%. And this is going to drive home the point that a lot of this, I feel like, has kind of happened in the last year. That's down 25%. Let's call it 25%, the PSA 10. The BGS 10 Pristine has dropped 53% in the last year. The PSA 9 has dropped 15% and the BGS 9.5 has dropped 11%, basically almost 12%. So those, you know, not as crazy gaps, but the PSA 10 to the BGS 10 is a considerable difference in value change. Let's look at the next card. Here we have the 1996 Kobe Tops Base. Nothing crazy here. Very popular card, widely available. Back in 2020, the PSA 10 to BGS 10 ratio was 5.24. BGS 10 sold for one, almost 1 1.2K. PSA 10 sold for $225. That is a massive gap between those two. The PSA 10 to BGS 9.5 was basically 2X. PSA 10 did 225. A BGS 9.5 did 115. The 9.5 to PSA 9, once again, 9.5s went for 115. PSA 9s went for $32. That's a three point, basically a 3.6x difference between those two. Let's look at today's ratios. PSA 10s are going for 1.02K, not much change there. Beckett Pristines are down to 1.45. That makes the ratio now 1.4. Back in 2020, it was 5x, basically. Now it is under 2x. A PSA 10 to a BGS 9.5 was 2x. The PSA 10 sold for about 2x more than the BGS 9.5. Now it sells for almost 3x. So a widening of that gap. PSA 10 to BGS 10 gap has narrowed. The PSA 10 to BGS 9.5 gap has widened. PSA 9 to BGS 9.5. Here is the BGS 9.5 currently sells for 360. The PSA 9 currently sells for 124. That is a gap of 3x down from a gap of 3.6. If we look at the last one year, the PSA 10 has dropped 20%. The PSA 9 has dropped 45%. There are a ton of PSA 9s in this card, 17,000 PSA 9s in this card. The BGS 9.5 has dropped 25%, so a 5% more drop than the PSA 10. And the BGS 10 Pristine has dropped 35%. So once again, the hardest hit of these. Now you can say that those got the most inflated. Sure, but we're only going back a year. A year doesn't even take us back to the peak of the market. So I'm not even going back to the peak. Next one, Mike Trout. 2011 Tops Update. Back in 2020, a BGS 10 sold for 2.4, basically 2.5K. A PSA 10 went for 1K. Right off the get, you can already see the problem here. 
This card today currently sells for more. In a PSA 10 and a BGS 10, it currently sells for less. That's not a good start. But back then, it was basically 2.25x, a BGS 10 compared to a PSA 10. Uh, a 10 to 9.5, uh, a PSA 10 sold for, like I said, 1.1. A BGS 9.5 went for about 800 bucks. That's about 1.37. And then 1.37 was also the ratio on a BGS 9.5 to a PSA 9. Fast forward to today. A BGS 10 sells for 1.5x of the PSA 10. That gap has narrowed considerably. A PSA 10, the BGS 9.5 was about, let's just call it 1.4, is now up to 1.7. And a BGS 9.5 compared to a PSA 9 was also at about 1.4, is now down to 1.2. So the trend continues. The gap continues to narrow between a BGS 10 and a PSA 10 and between a BGS 9.5 and a PSA 9. Not great for Beckett. And then once again, looking at the last one-year charts, PSA 10 down 40%, so big drop there, but you see the BGS 10 pristine down 55%, along with the Beckett 9.5 down 46%. So both those slightly harder hit than the PSA 10, and the PSA 9 actually only down 24% on this one. Uh, last example of these kind of all-encompassing. Connor McDavid went a little hockey on you, threw a little curveball at you, boys and girls. Back in 2020. Boy, if we just all bought Connor McDavid in 2020, we would all be in a much better place. Uh, BGS 10 pristines went for 1.4K. PSA 10s went for 520 bucks. That is a 2.73X modifier. The PSA 10 went for, like I said, 520. The BGS 95 went for 350. That's a 1.46. And then a PSA 9, the BGS 95 was 1.4. 3.6. Fast forward to today, a BGS 10 pristine goes for 4.5K, a PSA 10 goes for 3K, that is now only a 1.5X difference. When back in 2020, it was almost 2.75X difference. BGS 9.5 compared to PSA 10 is now down, or up, I'm sorry, to 2X. So a, a PSA 10 is now selling for 2X, a BGS 9.5. We're back in 2020. It was selling for one, basically just under 1.5. And a BGS 9.5 compared to a PSA 9 has kind of actually stayed pretty close in this case. Um, back in 2020, it was a 1.3X difference. In today's value, it is a 1.3 difference. And then once again, when we look at the last year, on McDavid, a PSA 10 is down 10%, a BGS 10 pristine is down 20%, a PSA 9 is down 10%, and a BGS 9.5 is down 22%. So I also wanted to look at one ultra modern example. This does not factor in pristine 10s uh, because there just wasn't enough sales volume on it. But I pulled the Luca Silver and just looking at the last 365 days, I was just kind of curious how the percentages have moved. The PSA 10 has dropped 30%. The PSA 9 has dropped 37%, and the BGS 9.5 has dropped 40%. So of the three you know, main grades out there, the BGS 9.5 has fallen the furthest, continuing the trend of what we have kind of seen across these cards that kind of span generations a little bit, for lack of a better term. So what is the big takeaway here? One... It does seem in the last year that the values between Beckett and PSA have narrowed considerably. A BGS 10 does not have the quite the pizzazz to it over a PSA 10 like it used to. And then on the lower end side, we are seeing Beckett 9.5s trending closer towards PSA 9s. Now they still sell for more, but they are getting a little bit closer. Now that, like I said at the beginning of the video, Beckett 9.5 specifically will vary depending on the subgrades a decent amount. 
So I, I kind of want the main focus here to be the BGS 10 to PSA 10, but I think it was at least worthy to note the macro level look at a BGS 9.5 compared to a PSA 9 and 10 as well. Even though, like I said, subgrades, to be fair, will vary those price points a little bit. So is there a key takeaway from all this besides that? I guess mine is, which if you've seen, especially the higher end stuff, you know, like the Tatum Green, the Luca Blue, I tend to target back at 9.5s for stuff like that because you could get a good quality discount on a really nice card in most cases. So I think my big takeaway here is, is that if a BGS 10 is available in a card, it might not be a bad idea to swoop in and, and gobble that up. Maybe the market has kind of overcorrected on this stuff to a degree. You know, if you're hunting for a particular card, it might be worth poking around a BGS 10 if you could get it for close to the price of a PSA 10. We don't know what the future holds, but those Beckett Pristine Pop Reports are pretty thin. There's not a ton of those out there. And that used to really matter. Today, it doesn't matter as much. It still matters, but it's definitely not as big of a deal. The numbers show that out. But at some point in time, that could flip the script. I would rather own, if I, if I had the money and I was in the market, I would still rather own a Beckett Pristine 10 of a LeBron Topps Chrome than a PSA 10. There's just less of them out there in that grade. And that could matter again more in the future. We don't know. Long term, you're talking 5, 10, 15 years from now. And that's kind of why I picked these particular cards. These do not get caught up in the ultra modern hype beast to a lesser degree. A, a LeBron Tops Chrome, think what you will about LeBron, is always going to matter to some degree. You know, his career is established at this point. Same with Trout, same with McDavid, same with the Kobe. So if you're looking at cards like that specifically, I think maybe eyeing up a BGS 10 Pristine if there's not that much of a difference between that and a PSA 10. Uh, if you could find a BGS 9.5 with good subgrades for a significant discount, Maybe swoop in and snag that up. Hell, you could always change the slap. You can always crack it and send it to PSA if it ends up getting worse in the future. But I will gladly take discounts on highly graded cards in a Beckett slab all day. All day I will target those. And, and you see it from, like, once again, I'll, I'll point back to the National last year. I got a lot of cards that I wanted that I was really looking for, and I was able to get them because I went after Beckett 9.5s instead of targeting PSA 10s in that case. So just some food for thought for you. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting data. So hope this was interesting to you. Curious for your thoughts and comments, as always, down below. We will catch you, boys and girls, on the next one. Peace.